Stephen Sieber, Transporian CEO, joining us now. Transporian uh, designs and develops cloud software uh, for shipping and transport logistics and has huge amounts of data and information about what is happening. Stephen, they're moving the, they're moving the vessel, um, the Ever Given, up to the lake. That should allow navigation to restart. Can you just give me a, an idea of the challenge of how long it is going to take to get all of the vessels at either end to navigate through the canal and get on their way? Yeah, sure. Good evening. So, you know, normally the Suez Canal operates at approximately half of its capacity. So you can, you can basically assume that it will take us about half of the, the time that the canal was blocked to basically come, come back into a normal state of operation at the canal. So that's probably going to be around four days. But that's an only the beginning. Then the canal is free. But then the question is, what happens to the ports where either the ships have departed or should should be arriving? Uh, and and that's going to be interesting to see because I think in in northern Europe, in the large ports in northern Europe, Rotterdam, Hamburg, we will see very quiet and calm calendar weeks 14, probably even still calendar week 15. But then we will see an increase of 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 arriving ships. All those you know, roughly 400 ships that haven't been able to pass the canal in the last few days or that have deviated over the um, Africa route will, will then come all together. And that's going to put uh, a lot of uh, pressure on these ports. Uh, and the same subsequently going to happen about a week later in Singapore and another week later in, uh, in the Southeast Asian ports. So What's the fallout of that? Do things just literally just take longer and then cost more the longer they wait? Or is it just a short-term blip? What's your takeaway from that kind of logistical delay? Well, as, assuming, assuming that the canal can reopen in the next, whatever, 24, max 48 hours, I, I think, you know, it will take us probably two to three months to come, to come back into a, a stable situation. Wow. But when I say stable situation and, you know, some of the data you shared just before uh, the interview, uh, a stable situation is already a very, very tight market situation in the, in, the, in the global shipping industry. Container prices are on an all-time high. There is a shortage uh, specifically in, 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 in Europe. Now there will be a shortage because there were quite a number of ships still departing from Europe, but there were no, no new ships coming in. And that will just take us, you know, up to probably two to three months until this somehow comes back into the state that we had before the Ever yeah. Given was uh, blocking the canal. Stephen, what do you think the long-term consequence of this is going to be? This is an absolutely enormous vessel. These vessels have been getting bigger and bigger. And I'm wondering whether they've reached the point where they are too big to be allowed through a canal that has such limited capacity at certain points. Do you think these ships should be going round the Cape or do you think they should be con allowed to continue to transit the canal? No, I think, that, of course, the ships have been getting b bigger and bigger. And, and, but we should also not forget, like, ever, ever since its opening in 1869, this is the first, you know, case that we have. So I, I think the... And, and, and just, you know, avoiding the Suez Canal is not really an option, right? For... for um, uh, uh, the, the North American, uh, sorry, the Northern European harbors taking the, taking the, the Africa route is, is 15 to 20 percent longer. For Southeast, uh, Southeastern European harbors or, or Black Sea harbors, it's up to 30 to 40 percent longer. So that's not a real option. I think the option is more in, in how, how shippers deal and how the, the canal authorities deal with that. And probably when, when strong head side uh, crosswinds are, are blowing, then, you know, support the, the ships with tugboats, keep mm -hmm. them en route. Those are probably the measures that are appropriate. But I, I, I wouldn't expect a, a longer term, a longer term effect on uh, avoiding the Suez Canal for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the winds because something that wasn't there decades ago was climate change. And I'm wondering how you look at that and then these vessels like you had these winds who knows where water levels are going to wind up being at? Like, how do you think about that in the world of transportation? Well, look, it, it, it over, I mean, I'm not a I'm not an expert in this area, but in 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 all the the operation of systems as sensitive as a, a Suez Canal or or large harbors, you know, we definitely have to keep an eye on how the longer term uh, environmental 
aspects are changing. And, and obviously it is something that has happened and, and that it never happened before because it's one of the largest chips that has been affected by this. So apparently there's something something new in this, but I'm, I'm quite sure that the authorities are, are investigating this. And, uh, and as I said, there might be, there might be uh, uh, countermeasures to take yeah. when terrible situations again occur. Stephen, as you said, um, the, the cost of a container is going up, freight rates are going up. Uh, we're seeing that in, in a number of different classes uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of stuff that's being shipped. Um, how long does that shortage, how long will that shortage take to unwind? I'm assuming somewhere somebody is making containers at a fairly rapid rate, and I'm sure <laughs> new ships are being, uh, are being commissioned and coming out of their cradles. That's going to take a little bit longer. How long will this, this kind of uh, um, supply side problem be there for, do you think? You know, that, that depends on many factors because, you know, you know providing new ships is, is, is a very long-term thing and there's a huge, a huge CapEx investment required. So I, I, would, I would assume that, you know, parties are probably reluctant to do this. And first and foremost, we're looking for container capacity, which is a little bit less uh, demanding, but it still takes some time. And I think... <clears throat> It depends a lot on how these, um, um, how long this unusual market situation uh, will yeah. stay in place. I mean, it it all goes back to to the pandemic, which in essence means that many services have been cut down. There is less travel. There is less gastronomy. Uh, people are not leaving homes anymore, and 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 as a consequence, the consumption of 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 goods at home is just increasing, mm -hmm. and this leads to. Uh, a, a, an increase in demand mainly from goods from China and that sort of brought the whole situation out of its equilib equilibrium and I think as we approach summer and as as hopefully you know the, the pandemic will slowly but surely come to an end you know we do expect that a, a few months afterwards uh, the, the whole system will relax again and will come back into the equilibrium it had before the pandemic.